Hey guys, welcome back to the Friday Vlog where we discuss activity that goes on here with the BuzzFeeber channel. That includes things like current events, headlines that are in the news, social media, pop culture, technology, and items of interest that come up during the week that allow us to have a little bit of a dialogue. If this is your first time here to the channel, welcome. If you are a follower on Alternative Tech and or a subscriber here on YouTube, I want to thank all of you guys for your continued support. We started off with the wrap. Fox 26 Houston fires disgruntled former employee Ivory Hecker for on-air network attack video. Ivory Hecker promised behind the scenes recordings of her employer when she accused them of muzzling her on air Monday. So essentially what we have here, if we can take a sarcastic bend that the media would take anytime this would be the opposition, is that uh, she was fired over wanting to present truth. That's right. She was going to expose the media for the media, of course, being the media. Anything you see on the media has been filtered in some way by a producer, by an editor, by a director, by whomever is within the media cabal of people. They are the ones who are going to go through and filter any material that goes on air. And if you go outside of that narrative, they will shut you down. They will fire you. She wasn't even suspended. She was straight up fired. Ivory Hecker, a reporter at Fox 26 Houston, was fired by the station after her on-air revelation Monday that she would be releasing behind-the-scenes recordings of her employer to Project Veritas. Now, that might have been <laughs> the clincher that got her fired. Here's James O'Keefe right here from Project Veritas, who actually does on-the-ground reporting, investigative reporting, exposing ironically enough, the media themselves. He could be doing any sort of other type reporting, but it is important that people realize, as we have talked about for four years, how the Democrats have worked alongside the mainstream media, the tech giants, activists, and special interests to ensure that everyone hated President Trump as much as they did. And here we are. It doesn't get mentioned enough for people to realize that a lot of this rather cultural wrangling that is going on started in 2016 when President Trump, well, came down the escalator essentially and then became inaugurated, right? This all started around the time he came down the elevator, then through his, then through the election and then the inauguration. And then once he became president, we never heard the end of the relentless attacks and undermining on the president by the media and here's someone who is exposing the media or telling the truth about the media because of course anything and most everything you see by the media as i mentioned goes through editors goes through producers goes through directors goes through a whole uh, an entire media staff to ensure that everything they say is going to be exactly what they want to express in their narrative you may have watched like during live streams uh, well, we call them live streams, but live reporting, how the reporters kind of have to try to play through that. Now, they're very gifted at speaking. Uh, some may say that uh, I am as well, <laughs> at least prattling onward. But nonetheless, you see that they don't have quite the uh, perspective, as it were, or the particular wording that they may want when they're out doing a live shoot. It can be kind of uh, off the cuff, but you can rest assured it's going to go through filtering before it ever makes the air and so basically ivory said on here as in this video which i'm not going to play because it'll get taken down or uh striked by uh the houston fox 26 news team uh apparently so they've they've they I think at first they suspended her and then now they've just outright fired her but on the uh topic of framing and the media here's a perfect example here we have right now as of this recording the conference going on between it's not actually between joe biden and putin it's actually why i want to talk about this because here in this image you see the two of them together but they aren't together in this conference it's separate why is that because joe biden is feckless and ineffectual struggles to get through a sentence struggles to get through a thought and if President Trump were to sneeze or cough or misread a prompter, because I have people send me these links all the time when I show them Joe Biden struggling to get through even a simple sentence, 
they have to send me these bizarre, very few, very limited montages of President Trump having misreads on a prompter, which is understandable, or other type gaffes that maybe a person can have under the spotlight of being a president or being under the spotlight, or even like when I'm doing these recordings, there's going to be misspeaks. There's going to be things going on because you're trying to think, you're trying to speak, you're trying to do many different things at the same time. And so it can be distracting. And someone like Joe Biden could not be in a room with someone like, look at the body posturing of Putin here. He's looking over at Biden like, okay, I'm listening. I'm, I'm, I'm appearing to be engaged, but his, his physical posture shows that he's relaxed but attentive biden over here is just putting on kind of an act he's got his legs kind of crossed which is kind of a you know i'm not a body language expert i've i've studied body language and 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 much of the psychology of body language but usually cross legs means kind of a little bit of a a protection a little bit of a defense i'm not saying that that that's exactly what it is i mean it might be more comfortable for him to sit like that but it but his body language is different but ladies and gentlemen when people come to me and argue with me, mostly from Twitter, because that's usually where most of the Twitterazzi left uh, organized together. So any and all support you want to give me on Twitter by following is greatly appreciated. But they always try to point out all these little minute issues with President Trump. But when it comes to Joe Biden, they seem completely oblivious and or completely ignored. So this here's usually how I respond to them, like I did to someone else the other day. I want you guys to listen to this. Okay. <laughs> to answer the first question, <laughs> I'm laughing too. They actually, I. Uh, well, look, I mean, he has made clear that uh, uh, no edit here, no edit. The no answer edit. is. All right, sorry about that. I meant to stop the video, and I actually stopped the recording. As you can see there, that was not an edit. I, I didn't mute it. I didn't affect the sound. Joe Biden just completely locked up. Can it happen to ordinary people? Sure, it can happen from time to time. But with Joe Biden, it happens all the time. But not only that, listen to this. And uh, I've said before, and I apologize for repeating. Oh, I didn't like first tell you you were taking a massive security advisor. I'm leaving out a lot of people here. I apologize. I'm going to get in trouble. But anyway, we'll get back to that. But um, uh, we, um, uh, you know, there's a lot that uh, that is it, 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 it's happening. I used to. Always okay, guys. So as you can see here. When people ask me about Molly Ball's article in Time Magazine, they often question her assessment about there being a cabal of people who fortified an election for a desired outcome. To answer their questions, I just show them videos of Joe Biden like I did here. Does anybody know what that man was just saying? He mentioned something about the security advisor, and then he apologizes for the fact that, well, the reason he's saying he apologizes is because that's the way the media approaches him. They have this apologetic type persona about Biden where he has to be extra careful what he says and what he does because he exposes himself like we just saw right here and what we saw right here. And so this whole framing, look at this. They show Putin with Biden here. That's not what's happening. Matter of fact, let me just go to it live real quick. And what you can see right here. Now, I got the sound down, but uh, this is the Washington Post. Now, earlier we saw Putin speaking with reporters, or I should say reporters making statements in the form of questions to Putin, but here they're waiting for Biden. They're not together. As you can see, they are not together. This is where Biden is going to be speaking. Putin has already spoken, but they're not going to put the two together. But yet in the framing, and I, I like the Washington Post, but in the framing here, you see how they utilize their techniques of framing where this reporter decides that she's going to tell the truth about something and she gets suspended and fired while the media can basically engage in whatever information, dissemination, and misinformation they want to. There's no board. There's no committee. There's no authoritative group that they have to answer to. No one. They can say what they want when they want to say it. They can shut people down and they can even destroy a sitting president. This is very pivotal. This is very significant. 
Other areas uh, I wanted to cover today, including critical race theory that is completely falling apart on the Democrats, I would have to say that this charade, this facade, this uh, contrived arrangement that the establishment has about Joe Biden being president, critical race theory, intersectionality, identitarianism, all of this nonsense is coming to a head. People have finally gotten... Um, a whiff, if, as it were, of this, and now they just don't want to deal with it anymore. So if you can, guys, and want to, share these videos. Share this particular video today so people can see where we are when I demonstrate Joe Biden and how I respond to these people who come to his defense. Can you imagine, can you imagine if President Trump were to have paused as he did or if president trump had paused the way joe biden had had done in this video can you imagine the calls for the 25th amendment we already heard about it when he had when he just misspeaks on a prompter or tries to go down a ramp or anything that by or trump did they always tried to shut him down but nonetheless guys here you have it the actual evidence of video and this is what i do when these people say things i just respond back with these videos and I normally never hear back from them. So it is a very curious process. But this whole framing of this of what's going on over there right now with the G7 was, to me, a PR disaster for the Biden team. His handlers have to be completely scratching their heads, completely worried and concerned. Because even now, as you can see, they aren't meeting together. No, they're not meeting together. This is where Biden is going to speak. No Putin. No Putin anywhere near him. I'm sure he'll probably get softball questions from the media. And Putin, I didn't get to hear much of what Putin was saying because, of course, I was putting this video together. But what little I was able to see, most of the reporters were kind of not necessarily softballing him, but almost every question seemed to revolve around Biden as opposed to uh, him as a leader or, or concerning Russia. Everything seemed to be uh, centered around president biden because that's where the media wants to point everyone to while they go through their contrived notions firing reporters for telling the truth and or suggesting that they're going to expose the media in any kind of a way because of course like government they can't be seen as weak ineffectual or unable to uh garnish the trust of the people but we have seen that they struggle a great deal whether it's the media whether it's the president it's all through a struggle, and I wanted to share this, guys, with you this week. All right, guys, so that's going to wrap it up for this Friday Vlog. Thank you for the likes, the shares, and the comments. And for all of you who have recently joined me on my other social media platforms, those can be found below this video, the various links to those social media platforms. So make sure you avail yourselves of those. And, of course, all of you here on YouTube, I want to thank all of you guys for your support as well. Everyone has contributed greatly, and it is incredibly appreciated. Thank you so very much, guys. And, of course, right there on the screen, that would be the channel icon for YouTube. You guys can click on that to subscribe, as well as indicate if you want notifications when there is content here, as well as those video shorts. So, guys, I will see you all right there behind that camera next week.